Hey guys, I hope you all had a great week. This is my topic for this week's video. So my subscriber GEO EPI321975 has asked the question why it has two MOSFETs and not only one MOSFET. Well, this question is in reference to the laptop that we fixed last week. So as you remember, our 19 volts comes onto the board right here, then goes down to a first MOSFET and then onto a second MOSFET then through a current sense resistor and then that's our main 19 volt power rail. So the question is why do we need to have two of these? Why not just one? And that is the question that I'm hopefully going to answer for you in this video. So come with me on the journey as we look into the power management IC and hopefully we will all learn something. You might remember last week we didn't need to get a data sheet in order to fix this because it was a very easy fix. Like really it was just to do with a spill here. I cleaned that up, found that the capacitor was shorted. When I removed that capacitor, everything started working again. However, for answering this question, a uh, data sheet would be useful for this. So I went searching and I found one. So this is the data sheet for this particular laptop. As you can see, we have our DC jack here. We have our MOSFET number one, which corresponds to this MOSFET right here. I have MOSFET number two, which corresponds to this one right here. And as we can see from the schematic, that connects to our power management IC right down here. And if I check out the model number of that, it's a BQ24715. I found a data sheet for that also. So this is that power management IC right here. It's a two to three cell NVDC1 battery charger controller. And what it says is the BQ24715 is an NVDC1 synchronous battery charge controller with low quiescent current, high light load efficiency for 2S or 3S lithium ion battery charging applications. And it says, and this is important to our question, the BQ24715 provides N-channel AC FET and RB FET drivers for power path management. Okay, what it tells us the applications of it here, it's using ultrabooks, notebooks, and tablets. Because what you'll find with ICs like this power management IC and all of the ICs on the board, they're usually, you know, they're very rarely specifically for one type of laptop. As I said here, this has multiple applications. Um, so what the people designing the laptops would do is they would pick an appropriate IC from all of Texas Instruments and everybody else's catalogs um, and you choose to use that based on functionality, cost of course, and basically what you know what they wanted to do, just get a suitable IC for this purpose. So what we can see here is they do a nice simplified application diagram which is particularly useful as well for when you're troubleshooting because there are a lot of pins on this but they've pointed out here the most significant ones. So if we look at it, there's an adapter that goes down uh, through two resistors, this is just a resistor ladder to break down the voltage, that voltage is measured on an AC detect pin right here, that tells the chip whether it's plugged in or not. We have our two MOSFETs right here. It says this one is optional. Um, that They're both driven, as we've seen, from the one pin. We have our current sense resistor right here. Uh, we have high side and low side MOSFET, inductor, I charge resistor, and P channel MOSFET. So these are for charging the battery, and this reduces it from 19 volts down to about 9 volts I think was it. This is an inductor here to keep the DC steady. This is a current sense resistor for the charging current. So we want to know the current here, the I in, which is the current that's entering the laptop, but we also want to know the charging current because if there was a fault and it was sh if the battery was shorted we would want to know about it. And last we we have our P-channel MOSFET right here which is used to let the laptop decide how it should be powered. Whether the power should come from the battery or whether the power should come from the charger. So that's how it looks on the data sheet. But what you'll notice is when we go back to the schematic for our particular laptop, if you ignore all the peripheral components, you will see that the application of it here is, is pretty much exactly what we had on our data sheet.
We have two MOSFETs that connect back to the one pin, the ACDRV pin here. We have our AC detect pin. Now it doesn't have a line connecting it right up to the, to the adapter, but it actually does. That's for just detecting whether the AC is um, plugged in or not. We have a current sense resistor right here, which also goes down to two pins on the chip. This allows the chip to measure the input current. We have our high side and low side MOSFETs. These break our 19 volts down to our charging voltage, which I think is 9 volts. We have an inductor here to keep that smooth. We have our current sense resistor right here, which again, two pins back to our power management IC again so that we can measure the charging current. And lastly, we have our P-channel MOSFET, which is this right here. So the gate of this P-channel MOSFET is controlled by our power management IC and this allows our power management IC to determine whether the laptop is powered by the battery or powered by our mains adapter. So finally I got round to answering the question. We have two MOSFETs. The first MOSFET is the AC FET and the second MOSFET is the RB FET. Both of these are controlled by uh, this pin right here, which is the AC drive pin of our power management IC. The AC FET allows the power management IC to control the voltage from the AC power adapter entering the motherboard. If the gate pin is high, which is usually about 25 volts, the 19 volts from the AC power adapter is allowed through the AC FET and onto the motherboard. The RB FET is the reverse blocking FET which provides negative input voltage protection and it prevents the voltage from the battery feeding back to the DC jack. That's my video for this week. I think it's important that we try and build up our knowledge on this. And one of the important steps in fixing laptops is to understand how the power management IC works because like I said earlier, this is a similar configuration on a lot of these laptops. DC power jack, first MOSFET, second MOSFET, current sense resistor. A lot of this is the same on all of them, so we need to understand how this works. But I'm going to see you next week, and I'll hopefully have something a lot more interesting than this video.